welcome to the Cinema Gold Show. I'm your host, Larry Lace. And on today's episode, we dive back into the Big Bang Theory, giving our review of Season 7. But first, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Pondex, for sponsoring this episode. If you're a podcaster looking to grow your audience and get more engagement, check them out today at pondex.com. Use the promo code Larry21 for 10% off your order. And now on to today's topic. Most of the time it seems that it's all downhill for a TV series after its fourth or fifth season. Sitcoms are certainly no exception. The character relationships and conflicts grow too comfortable and familiar. The humor becomes stale and redundant. There's just less and less water in the well upon each return trip. And that certainly seemed to be the case with Big Bang Theory in season six. While the season certainly had its moments, its overall uneven quality suggested that maybe it was time for Sheldon Leonard and the rest of the gang to fade gracefully into the night. But stale or not, the Big Bang Theory was popular enough that CBS selected to renew it season after season. That would have been cause for alarm if season 7 continued the trend of tired humor and character conflicts, but this season instead was a notable improvement on the last it finally seemed to gain some momentum as far as the relationships were concerned. So even if season 10 still seems a little excessive at this point, at least this season showed there's still plenty of room left for this show to grow. The season started off on a relatively strong note as the characters dealt with holdover conflicts from season 6. The absence of Leonard and Raj's newfound ability to talk to women chief among them. The show was none the worse for wear without Leonard in the forefront. As the straight man of the group, he really isn't that all isn't all that interesting a character, and when his roller coaster relationship with Penny isn't a focus, there's very little for Leonard to do but stand around and make snarky remarks about Sheldon. Even when Leonard returned from his brief oceanic voyage, his role rarely expanded beyond those familiar boundaries. Often the humor was at its strongest this season when the focus shifted away from the core Leonard Sheldon Penny trio, and onto the other characters. There were several episodes where Bernadette, not Sheldon, proved to be the comedic highlight. The writers seemed to realize that there was a lot of untapped potential in the diminutive but wrathful Bernie. And one element that helped keep season 7 feeling relatively fresh was the constant emphasis on breaking the characters into smaller groups and exploring relationships that have been underutilized in the past. For example, the friendship turbulence saw Sheldon and Howard square off, only to be brought back together in the end by a mutual fear of dying in a fiery plane crash. Amy was also given a chance to bond with more of the group outside of Sheldon. Amy had some significant low points in terms of her relationship with Sheldon, but at least she was treated more like a real member of the group most of the time. And even when episodes focused on the Sheldon Penny pairing, which has been explored in pretty close depth in past seasons, the results were always memorable. Those two have perhaps the most endearing bond on the show at this point. After all these years, Sheldon has grown to tolerate Penny in a way he doesn't with just about every other person on the planet. And for her part, Penny has a clear sisterly affection for the prickly Sheldon. And as we saw on the proton transmogrification, even Penny has developed a geeky side after all these years of being exposed to Star Wars. These moments that paired the two together were often among the most memorable of the season. Non-traditional characters, pairings aside, there were times when it seemed like writers were content to rest on the laurels and revisit familiar concepts. Sometimes this was a problem as an underwhelming revival of Anything Can Happen Thursday late in the season, but other times I was perfectly happy seeing the show revisit those concepts and conflicts that worked so well in the past. Maybe there were two episodes that revolved around Raj entertaining his friends with themed gatherings. But both episodes offered a lot of laughs, particularly the mummy observation and its murder mystery dinner premise. And so what if there were two Professor Proton themed episodes in short order? Bob Newhart as Professor Proton never ceases to entertain. On that note, this season got a surprising amount of comedic and dramatic mileage out of its celebrity guest appearances. Will Wheaton made several guest appearances as per usual, but easily his best moment came in the indecision amalgamation. Besides being Wheaton's first episode with no interaction with Sheldon, there was a great scene where he advised Penny on her versioning acting career while drawing from his own life experiences and struggles as a child star. 
James Earl Jones also had a great guest role in the convention conundrum as he and Sheldon cavorted about town and pestered Carrie Fisher. Strictly in terms of Star Wars humor, that episode was actually more satisfying than the May the 4th themed The Proton Man Transformification. But again, it was the aforementioned Bob Newhart who shone brightest this season. He reprised his role as the fumbling Bill Nye-esque Professor Proton twice this season. First, in the Proton Displacement, he teamed up with Leonard to do some experimenting and try to legitimize his career as a scientist again. That episode had the benefit of playing Newhart off a wider cast than in his Season 6 appearance, conversely, the Proton Displacement. Saw Proton pass away only to return as a Force Ghost in Sheldon's Dreams. Newhart's deadpan, unimpressed reaction to all the Jedi tomfoolery was great. But what made the episode one of the best of the season was Proton's parting wisdom. Sheldon should appreciate those in the life he cares about while they're still around. Having had a few weeks to reflect it, I'd go so far as to call Sheldon's emotional hugging of Leonard my favorite moment in the series so far. It was a bigger, more resonant moment than even Penny and Leonard finally getting engaged or Sheldon finally kissing Amy. One area Season 7 stacks up better as a whole, rather than on a week-by-week basis, is the ongoing character arcs. Weekly, the season sometimes annoyed with the way episodes would introduce conflicts, fail to resolve them, and take a long time to pick up the threads again. As with many sitcoms, the status quo can be a long time in shifting on this show. But there was definitely a sense of progression over the long term for Raj, Penny, and Sheldon this season. In Raj's case, he put himself out there and recovered from his unceremonious breakup with Lucy, and developed a healthy relationship with a new woman. Penny, meanwhile, decided to pursue her dreams, throw herself headlong in her acting pursuits, and generally grew up a little. But it was Sheldon who evolved more than any other character, thanks to several key episodes. The mommy observation, the discovery dissipation, the locomotive manipulation, and the proton, proton transformification. Sheldon was forced to deal with serious issues like his inability to accept change, the lack of father figures in his life, and his need to learn how to show love and affection for those most important to him. All of that came to a head in the finale, the status quo combustion. Faced with a lack of freedom at work and the prospect of living without Leonard, Sheldon finally gave up and decided to hit the rails. As much as it was odd to see yet another season end with a major character embarking on an extended trip, It was a satisfying way to wrap up this leg of Sheldon's life journey. Overall, Season 7 had no overtly bad episodes. There were some definitive weak spots, but in general, those were just a result of humor that misfired or plots that relied too much on on the usual tired Leonard and Penny drama. The only element of the season that really left me cold was the treatment of Amy. For every step forward she made in a relationship with Sheldon this season, There was always another step back just ahead. Sheldon never seemed to apply Professor Proton's lesson to his relationship with Amy, and seeing him flee town without even saying goodbye to her, much less consulting about her thoughts on the matter, was depressing. That's to say nothing of the times Amy was made the target of ridicule by various characters. Sure, she's an easy target because of her frumpy appearance and awkward social skills, but Amy deserves better than she got in Season 7. I hope the writers can do better by her in Season 8. So of course you're now asking what our final verdict is on this season. Well, before we get to our verdict, please hit that thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, to, and bell notification button to be notified of future videos. And let us know down in the comments section below what did you think about Season 7. And as always, subscribe to the podcast on all your favorite podcast platforms, including Good Pods. But today... Our verdict for Season 7? It established that there's still life left in the Big Bang Theory after all these years. No, there wasn't a great deal of clever or creative storytelling at work this season. The writers revisited familiar concepts and conflicts, often more than once during the course of the season. But along the way, they managed to push several characters forward and achieve some pretty memorable gags. Sheldon's ongoing struggles with change and affection alone made the season worthwhile. Hopefully the character momentum can carry over into season 8 and keep the spark of life burning for another season.
As always, if you want to support the channel, you can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash cinema gold. Your support helps the channel grow, upgrade our equipment, bring in new hosts, pay them, and hopefully one day take this show on the road. As always, thank you so much for watching and listening. We will see you next time.